Greetings all you groovy ghoulies out there and welcome to another spooky edition of the Hollywood Boo Down. See what I did there? Yeah, I changed low to boo and called it Boo Down. Yep, it's trying to sound scary. Although now that I think of it, it sort of seems like I'm booing my own segment. Didn't think that one through, I guess, but moving on. Uh, Boolywood lowdown? Boo like Bollywood? But, but forget it. Moving on. As many of my adoring public may know, and by adoring public I mean my mom, I am very much so into horror movies. So much so that it causes me to say so a lot in one sentence. And it often raises an eyebrow or two from a lot of people that I know, Alicia. Many find it perplexing that an incredibly handsome specimen such as myself could have such an obsession with a genre that deals with such morbid and negative subjects. Gore, death, blood, and monsters. All of these make up perhaps the most underappreciated genre in cinema. Despite racking in millions upon millions of cash over the decades for movie companies everywhere, many mainstream audiences and critics have often shunned horror pictures the same way I shun exercise or asparagus. This is ironic actually, seeing how some of today's most influential actors and actresses got their start in this red-headed stepchild of a genre called horror. So to continue our month of October, and instead of doing my usual Halloween recommendations, which no one probably cares about anyway, The Fog, Dracula, Bride of Frankenstein, Halloween, The Wolfman, Night of the Creeps, Reanimator, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and Fright Night, the original Not the Sacrilegious remake, starring the very overrated Doctor Who, yep, you heard me, just to name a few. We're going to open up some of the closets and discover some skeletons of some of today's most notable actors whose lives and careers may have been a lot different without their horror movie roots. Oh, and also the howling and phantasm. Okay, here we go. Now, there are some actors whose beginnings in horror films are almost universally known. Jamie Lee Curtis's career launched into pole dancing for Schwarzenegger and Activa commercials after Halloween, as well as some other horror greats like The Fog, Prom Night, and Terror Train. There's also Sigourney Weaver in Alien, and Aliens, and the many declining sequels to follow. And Kathy Bates, who haunted our nightmares after her award-winning performance in Misery, playing the first in Ultimate Fanboy. And who could forget Johnny Depp getting sucked into a bed in A Nightmare on Elm Street, at a time where we didn't want Johnny Depp to burst into a fountain of blood. And Kirsten Dunst as a cute-as-a-button vampire in Interview with a Vampire. But others may be less known to many. Before sinking with the Titanic, Leonardo DiCaprio battled aliens in Critters 3. To that they didn't eat him. Kevin Bacon had camping issues in Friday the 13th. Before Tom Hanks got big, he had a small, haha, supporting role in He Knows You're Alone. George Clooney had both slasher issues and a bad mullet in Return to Horror High. And lovable family man Michael Landon had a hairy start with I Was a Teenage Werewolf. Then you have the ladies. Yes, the starlights of the silver screen of today were once actresses of the silver screams of yesterday. Jennifer Conley spoke to insects and dealt with a serial killer in Phenomena. And Eva Mendez found her way out of the maze in Children of the Corn 5. What a winner. But don't fret, Eva, you can commiserate with Charlize Theron, who was in Children of the Corn 3, Urban Harvest. Demi Moore may have had a way with ghosts, but had a harder time with winning the heart of a monster in a movie called Parasite, and Jennifer Aniston's continued success may have come from the luck of the Irish in Leprechaun. What a lousy Irish accent. Patricia Arquette had sleepless nights during A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3, while Renee Zellweger called cut on the horror genre after Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Next Generation. Julia Louis-Dreyfus would probably like to stick her performance in Troll, Under a Bridge, and Brooke Shields, before diving into a lagoon, dived into the suspenseful Alice Sweet Alice. And Law and Order's Marissa Hargitay, Hagritay, however you say it, probably handled perps better than toilet monsters in the movie Ghoulies. Amy Adams had some fun in the sun in Psycho Beach Party, where she actually acted with more than one facial expression, while Meg Ryan had housing issues in Amityville 3, who would later be cursed with plastic surgery gone horribly wrong. Even today's legendary tough guys started out in more mild-mannered roles. Death Wish icon Charles Bronson played a mute named Igor in House of Wax, where he had no lines but still gave a better performance than Paris Hilton in the remake. Jack Nicholson played a strange man with a dental fetish in the original Little Shop of Horrors, who would grow up with an urge to kill his family. 
with an axe. And Dirty Harry himself, Clint Eastwood, made his own day, debut that is, as a research assistant in Return of the Creature. Probably one of three movies where he doesn't shoot somebody. And there you have it, a handful of Hollywood greats who probably owe their entire career to that misunderstood mistress known as horror. I'm sure there are many more, some I've missed and ones people are just dying to tell me, but in truth, I don't care. So the next time you scoff at us horror geeks, try to remember what amazing actors or actresses' talents could have gone amiss had they were not given the chance to shine or scream or kill. Until then, I remain Mark Macrina until I can legally change my name to Rousedower. Wishing all of you happy Halloween and happy horror movie watching. This has been another Horrorwood Lowdown. Okay, see? Get it? I replaced Holly with Horror Horror Wood. Sort of sounds like scary wood, like actual wood, which is wood that's scary, which seems to... You know what? See you in November where it's Thanksgiving and not enough turkey movies to worry about word association crap like this.